And welcome back, folks. This is Beverly here. Thanks for joining me. We are continuing our war against the uh, Count of Osrage. And, uh, you know, our troops are going to go kill his army. Hopefully. Let's just examine our army makeup here real quick. Before I go into battle, I have 877 heavy infantry. That's the backbone of my army. He only has 747. It's a little closer than I'd like, but we should be good here. Oh, I'm attacking into a forest. So, terrain is a little important in this game. If you're, like, attacking into the mountains, like the Pyrenees here. Let's see, it's mountains. It's, uh, gives a great defensive bonus. Forest is a minor defensive bonus, but still relevant. I hope this battle goes well. I really, really do. I don't like losing battles. Um, okay. This is great. Left flank, we've got them outnumbered. We've got them outnumbered everywhere, but this flank is already falling. Look at that. Boom. Boom. They're already running away. We're flanking already. This is great. Wonderful. Oh, and the kingdom of... <laughs> King of Denmark is here. He's already over here. I didn't think he'd actually care enough to join and actually literally help me, but this is great. So he's going to join this battle. And... This flank's going down. When's he going to get here? October 9th, so a couple more days. Charge tactic, yeah. Keep trying. Oh, there anyway. We got double flanking and reinforcements on the way. Ooh, baby. I'm liking the look of this. See, now we have 4,000 troops. Look at these. Totally destroyed. Just give up. You've lost the war, man. Speed things up a tiny bit. So yeah, we lost 233 men, he lost 715, we're gonna go siege down his territory. Maybe the King of Denmark, if he feels like it, will go chase him down. Maybe not. Yeah, whatever dude. That's cool. Yeah, you're gonna siege with me? Big help. No, really, I'm glad you're here. Speed things up a little bit. We're just waiting for a siege now. Where are you gonna go? I'm gonna try and siege down something else. Good luck. Actually, you know what? I wonder if I leave, is he gonna keep sieging? He is. So, I'm gonna leave him to siege this county down, and I'm gonna try and chase down this army again. Especially now that we no outnumber him even more. Excellent. My careful maneuvers in this battle have shown our patient nature to everyone. I've gained the patient trait, another excellent trait. Plus one to everything? Intrigue, diplomacy, stewardship, and learning? Not martial. But better defense battle trait, so that's still cool. And I've improved by diplomacy to eight. That was easy. Uh, what should I do? King of Ireland? I think I should try and amass some wealth. It's more realistic. I know it looks like I'm conquering a lot quickly, but King of Ireland's a little ways away. Maybe not too much, but... Your experience in matters of war has increased, and there are many things you will do differently in future battles. What will you focus on? I could become a winter soldier. Master flat terrain. Focus on cavalry. Focus on light foot. I think I'm gonna try and do flat terrain. That seems the most relevant. We fought in the forest a little bit, but there's a lot of plains and farmland. And not so many steps over here, but a lot of plains and farmland. So, yep, this battle's over. Done. What do we got here? Oh, the princess is of age now. He's proposing that they marry. The betrothal is turned into a real marriage. I need another commander. Assign one immediately. And I have a child who lacks a guardian. We're going to take a little side break from the battle, or the war, quick. Talk about educating children. So when a child turns six years old, he starts to become a person, you could say. A person needs to know how the world works. You know, they start to develop personality. So... He needs an educator. I'm going to right-click on him and say educate child. 
Right now, my nephew is teaching him. But, eh. He's my kinsman. He's not my direct heir. He's my nephew's son. I don't even know what that makes him. But, that's fine. My nephew can teach him. That's cool with me. We'll talk a little bit more about it once I'm actually raising somebody. So I have a budget deficit. Uh, raising your troops costs money. And right now my monthly balance is negative 2.74 gold. So I've run out of money. It's for a good cause. I mean... Oh, you stopped sieging, Denmark. Please. Get a grip, would ya? So what's gonna happen? Your coffers are empty and you owe your subjects money. The morale of your armies will suffer and no... The longer this goes on, the more corruption and criminals will plague your countries. Or counties. So, there's a chance that uh, pirates, brigands could enter some of my counties and disrupt tax flow, tax revenue. My morale apparently is going down. My wife's pregnant again. I don't know if it'll really show that the morale is going down. Maybe over time it will, but it's a percentage thing. Not a numbers thing. As opposed to European Universalis, where it's like, oh, your total max morale is 3.7. I think it's just like 100% here. Uh, there probably is a number behind it. And the percentages of that number. And now I'm just, you know, talking real nerdy stuff. <laughs> but I'd like to know what's going on behind the screens. So if I look at my military tab, you can see that already, you know, I've lost some troops in this war, but they've replenished in my county. But they're not joining my army automatically or anything like that. I'd have to dismiss my personal levies and raise them again for uh, them to actually join my army. Oop, I had another son. Tricky, tricky, tricky. Technological advance. we can talk about that in a second. I finished the siege, and you can see he's trying to siege down this county over here, but he only has 570 troops, and honestly, the defenders have 1,625, so it's ineffective. He's not going to make any progress. That's what that little red stuff means. I'm not even sure what that is. It's an exclamation point. I don't know what that's supposed to look like. Surprised I never really tried to figure that out. Pardon me while I yawn. And we've sieged down the castle, and we've won this war. We offer peace, enforce demands. He is... Well, actually, the county is now mine. And why... Let me just dismiss my levies here. I know what you're asking yourself. Wait a minute, you just declared the war on this guy, but he still exists and is your vassal. This guy no longer exists. This is now my Demesna. I now have two counties in my direct control. Bright green. If I go over here, my domestic says two out of three. My total max number of troops is 1,589. But it'll be it'll go up pretty soon. It's that when you conquer some territory and you take it over, you get some debuffs on the, the land. Like recently conquered, levy size minus 200%. So basically I have no levy for a year. That's cool. That's fine. Whatever. I lost in succession. We can talk about that soon. Okay, so I've started gaining some gold. So I've dismissed my troops, and my budget deficit will be gone in like one month here. There it goes. I'm at zero. And go away. Budget deficit. There you go. Now, technology. I'm so glad you asked about technology. Technology doesn't play a terribly important role in this game, but over time it does play a more and more important role. So, you basically get technology points. Well, okay. There's three categories of technology. Military technology, economic technology, and cultural technology. Um, I guess the military technology probably makes sense. It's all like fighting and military organization, stuff like that. Culture advances also make sense, but basically, uh, majesty improves your prestige, the short reign debuff when you get a new ruler. We'll talk about that maybe later. Tolerance for different cultures. Legalism allows different laws. We'll talk about laws. Uh, but noble customs, popular customs, and religious customs just help your vassals like you more. 
city vassal mayors like you want. Uh, but economic advances is basically for buildings. Um, construction makes building quicker and cheaper. Town infrastructure unlocks some buildings and increases tax revenue. Same with castle infrastructure for castles, churches for churches. Crew keeps are kind of involved in all three holding types. Trade practices, uh, trade value, and trade is not really relevant for us, although it does unlock some buildings. There, if you play as a trade republic, trade practices is very important. Like if you're going to play as Venice or Genoa, that would be very important, but it's not really important for us. But you advance technology by accruing points and then spending those points to increase your technology. Um, and enough time has passed. I've got enough military technology points. I have 50. I get one per month based on my ruler attributes. So his learning is what gives me technology points. But I think I get more martial military technology than the other ones. You can see I have plus one for military technology, plus 0.92 for economic technology, and plus 0.68. It's based on the your learning and the relevant skill. So I have a good martial skill. That's why I have more here. Learning plus martial is, point six, is 16. Or no. Learning plus martial is 25. And that makes it one. Exactly. And learning plus stewardship, aka my economic attribute, is 18. So it's 0.92. I don't know the exact math there, but that's why it's happening. My diplomacy skill is my weakest, so it's 17. Right? Yeah. 17 versus 18. It's not that different, but the 0.68 is much different. Tech points per attribute. Huh. From buildings. Oh, I get... Yeah. I get some economic growth from buildings as well. I'm sorry for going into this so much detail. You guys are bored. But, um... Military organization is a good one to invest into because it increases your overall morale. Which is kind of like, you know, the thing that lets you win a battle. But heavy infantry is a nice uh, stat to um, invest into, as well as siege equipment. Some siege speed is a big thing that you're waiting for in the game. Uh, right now, they're also. I think I'm just going to invest in heavy infantry here. And you see that went away. I spent some of my points. Now, another way you accrue points. Besides just based on your personal uh, stats, is you can send your spy master to study technology, which is what I'm going to do now. Now that I stop my son from trying to assassinate me. And the only places that are going to light up are places that are have better technology than you, basically. So I guess I'll send him to Rome, study there, and you can see. One of the weird things about technology in this game is that I like my kingdom doesn't have one technology stat. Each county has their own technological stats. And you can see all of these counties. It shows their technology down here. Military advances, economic advances, and cultural advances. And it says 13 because I've got 13 levels of different military technology. So each one of these is one level. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. These third ones here are not completely full, so it's almost three. But So I just invested in heavy infantry here, which gave me one more level. And as you can see, I now have 13 here, and everywhere else has 12 around me. Because they have not invested like I did, because I had the points, baby. So that's technology just going to go up with time. Uh, unless you're worried about being assassinated or trying to assassinate somebody else or work on other different plots, then it's good to have your um, spy master studying technology. Because when I go back now, you can see some of these gears, none of them are turning. None of them are turning. Maybe they don't have much better technology than I do. 13, 18, 18, 18. There's only too many numbers, but yeah, I don't know why he's there. They don't have any better technology than I do. 
Hopefully we'll get to show you somebody that has better technology than me someday. So, yeah, we're off to a great start here. And in a year, this will start to replenish more. And I'll have even more troops and more attacks. So, if you click on your shield here, um, it looks at your, basically your titles. I've got these counties are my vassals. These ones here are my personal titles. People are dying. My half-brother died. My cousin died. Cool. So I hold these two counties, and this is my duchy. Petty Kingdom of Mumu. And down here we have our balance sheet. Um, this is my tax from my personal domesna, from a city. I don't get any... Hmm. No feudal tax, huh? My counts aren't paying me any money. Really. Neither is my bishop. Well, that's funny. The bishop's not paying me any money because he likes the pope more than me. Both of them do. But if I got him to like me more than 42, because he likes the pope 42, he would start paying me some money. My nephew wants a fief of zone to go. No! So my nephew is if he's he wants me to give him a county, basically. Or maybe a city or something to run. But I'm not gonna give him that. Why don't you go become a monk or something, buddy? My power is for my son. So Oh uh, yeah. Another way you could get more money is to go up to your laws tab. If I go to my laws tab, I'm going to keep time going, but just slowly. I've got inheritance laws, realm laws, and obligations, right? Obligations is where you get the fine-tuning of your realm. Even though you think that'd be real, but... Oh! I've already fabricated another claim. On Earl of Dushumane. So it's this guy down here. That's where I sent my chancellor. Hmm. Do I want to use it? Yes, I do. I'm going to lose 39 gold, so I'm going to go negative and 100 prestige. That's fine. Can I revoke the title? Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, I was talking about laws, so let's go finish our conversation about laws. Uh... I generally, you know, your cities are more about money. So, and, and your church is kind of balanced. And your feudal vassals, aka your barons and counts, people that own castles, you're going to want more levies. So, it might be a better idea to ask for more taxation from your cities and less levies from your cities. And it will balance out. Like, if I ask for more taxation it'll he'll like me 10 less it's a you get an opinion hit but if i ask for less vassals at the same time it would even out because he'd like me 10 points more and that would even out and that's not a bad strategy and i'm actually going to go ahead and ask for more taxation from him and my vassals have to support it or oppose it. Or probably oppose it, truth be told. Let's see. Three of them are four. Eleven of them have so far not voted. Oh, they've approved. Maybe they don't have much to say. So, yeah. Now I'm making a little more money. Not much more. I forgot to check. But you can see if I have over here a 3.31 per month, which is a good amount. And, since I successfully fabricated a claim on this county, the county of my vassal, I can be like, dude, not only should you be my vassal, but that county should actually be my personal domesna. And I can revoke that title. Revoke the county of this. This will lower Earl's opinion of you by negative 60. Since we have claim on it, our vassals will now reject. Well, what happens if I try and 
revoke this county from this guy. It'll say your other vessels. This will lower his opinion of you and your other vessels by 15. So because I this is not justified, I can still do it. You know, if my vassal is going to do what I say, maybe, maybe I'll go to war with him over it. But my other vassals will be like, dude, like this mayor would be like, dude, what the shit? You're just revoking counties left and right for fun? Not cool. And he'd like me 15 points less. So, all right, that's going to be it for this episode. When we come back, we're going to revoke this county, maybe go to war one more time. I suppose I'm a little ways from dying, but and we haven't talked about inheritance yet. That's some really complicated and exciting stuff. So I hope you stick around, everybody. Thanks for watching.